Welcome to this mini lecture on glycogen synthesis and breakdown. Glycogen is essentially a ball of linked glucose molecules. So each one of these is a glucose molecule and note that they're all linked together in chains that are branched. Okay, so a highly branched structure, so it forms a three-dimensional ball shape. And in the very center, there's a protein, glycogenin, that starts off the, the, the synthesis of glycogen. And these balls of glycogen are constantly growing when there's plenty of glucose around and insulin signaling and shrinking when cells need more glucose, or in the case of the liver, when more glucose needs to be released to the blood. What do you think might be the evolutionary advantage for animals to store their glucose as highly branched glycogen instead of the linear polymer of starch, which is how plants store their glucose? Well, when glycogen, when the glucose from glycogen is released, it's off the ends. And note that when you have a highly branched structure, there are far more ends to release lots of glucose quickly. We have to move and run. Plants are stationary. They don't need to release their glycogen quickly. It is important to understand that the role of glycogen stored in the liver is very different from that of glycogen in other cells. Liver glycogen is specifically for maintaining blood glucose levels. So when the uh, glycogen gets broken down in the liver, it's to release out into the blood. Glycogen in all other cells in our body is for use in that cell where it is stored for glycolysis and to make ATP. Since the role of liver glycogen is to maintain blood glucose levels during fasting, it should come as no surprise that the liver concentration of glycogen decreases as we fast. And in the image shown below, we see in a well-fed animal. There is lots of glycogen, all these black dots, uh, in, in the liver. Whereas after a period of fasting or starvation, there is far less visible glycogen. Question, what do you think happens to muscle glycogen levels with fasting? Unlike liver glycogen, muscle glycogen levels remain relatively constant during fasting. Remember, the purpose of the glycogen within muscle is to be a rapid source of glucose for glycolysis and ATP generation. Imagine that you're fasting and that what you want to do is get food. Well, you'd want your muscles to be able to work so that you can go out and get food. And muscles do not have the glucagon receptor on their surface, so they don't respond to glucagon. They don't respond to low blood glucose levels. However, muscle glycogen stores do expand in response to a carbohydrate meal and insulin signaling. Now let's talk about how glycogen is synthesized, how these balls of glycogen expand in response to insulin and plenty of glucose, and how they're broken down or how the balls contract and release glucose. Here are two different depictions of glycogen synthesis. On the left is how it's shown on our metabolic map, and the right is a cartoon. Let's go through the cartoon. The first thing to note is that activated glucose is used, and that's UDP-bound glucose. Glycogen synthase is the main enzyme, and the UDP comes off, and the glucose is attached at the end. After several rounds of glycogen synthase activity, so we've added lots of glucose, it's now time to make a new branch. So branching enzyme, or a 4,6 transferase, transfers this chunk of the chain to a new, forming a new branch point, connecting carbons 4 and 6 of glucose. Glycogen, glycogen synthase can now add more glucose at the ends, at all of the ends of the glycogen, further expanding the size of our ball of glycogen. Glycogen breakdown or glycogenolysis is depicted here. So phosphorylase or glycogen phosphorylase is the main enzyme involved, and it activates phosphate molecules to cleave off phos or the glucose at the ends of glycogen.
releasing phosphorylated glucose. Okay, so the glucose that's released is already phosphorylated. When the branch points start getting shorter, we need debranching enzyme, which moves a branch to the end of a linear polymer, hydrolyzes off just the little branch point glucose, and then phosphorylase can continue degrading the straight chain of glycogen. The names of the enzymes involved can get confusing, so let's compare what a phosphorylase is compared to a phosphatase. Phosphorylase, or glycogen phosphorylase, activates a phosphate molecule to cleave off a glucose 1-phosphate, making the glycogen 1-glucose residue shorter. A phosphatase, by comparison, activates water to hydrolyze a phosphate off of something. So glucose 6-phosphatase uses water to hydrolyze phosphate off of glucose. Now let's compare both of these to a kinase. Remember, a kinase is an enzyme that uses the phosphate from ATP and transfers that terminal phosphate onto usually a hydroxyl group to make a phosphorylated entity. So glycogen phosphorylase is the main enzyme involved in glycogen breakdown, and phosphorylated glucose is released. Now we look over at our metabolic map, and you see that glucose 1-phosphate that's released from glycogen breakdown is isomerized to, to glucose 6-phosphate, which can then enter glycolysis. Question. The unique presence of what enzyme specifically in hepatocytes allows the liver glycogen to not be used for glycolysis, but instead to maintain blood glucose levels during fasting. It's glucose 6-phosphatase that hydrolyzes this phosphate off of the 6th position of glucose that now produces free glucose that can exit through the GLUT2 transporter and enter the bloodstream. Okay, let's now compare and contrast the role of glycogen in the liver and the muscle by practicing the effects of various hormones on these. So what do you think will be the effect of insulin signaling on hepatic glycogen and muscle glycogen? So insulin, in both cases, will stimulate glycogen synthesis. Insulin signals there's plenty of glucose around, and it can be stored in cells. What do you think glucagon signaling does to hepatic glycogen and muscle glycogen? So glucagon levels are high during fasting, and that's when uh, liver glycogen stores should be broken down to release glycogen into the blood. Muscles do not express glucagon receptors, and so they'll, they are mute to the signal of glucagon. What effect do you think epinephrine or adrenaline signaling has on hepatic glycogen and muscle glycogen? Epinephrine stimulates breakdown of both these, these forms of glycogen. Think about it when you have an adrenaline response. Your liver needs to maintain blood glucose to supply energy to all your running activated muscles. And the muscle glycogen will be broken down to provide energy for your flight, fight or flight response. Let's think through the process of the regulation of hepatic glycogen breakdown and synthesis. So let's start off in the fasting state. All right, so we have glucagon bound to the glucagon receptor. Now in this state, which is going to be more activated, the glycogen phosphorylase or the synthase? Well, this is a fasting state, and the liver should be releasing glucose into the blood. So it's going to be phosphorylase that's activated. So how does that happen uh, downstream of a G-protein coupled receptor? Well, it's no surprise that a G protein is going to be activated, so it's going to release its GDP bind to GTP, and that's going to associate with adenylate cyclase. We'll just call it AC adenylate cyclase. What does it do? Well, it synthesizes cyclic AMP from ATP, 
So we'll get some cyclic AMP inside these hepatocytes. What does cyclic AMP do? Well, it binds protein kinase A, so we call that PKA, and activates it. So now we have increase in this protein kinase, protein kinase A. And protein kinase A does two things that are important here. One is it phosphorylates and activates an enzyme called phosphorylase kinase. Okay, that's a funny one. Phosphorylase kinase, which is a protein kinase that phosphorylates and activates glycogen phosphorylase. So phosphorylates that enzyme makes it active. And this whole process that we just drew out can happen in seconds of glucagon binding its receptor. Protein kinase A also phosphorylates glycogen synthase, but this time the phosphorylation of glycogen synthase and on a specific amino acid side chain inactivates the synthase. So when we're fasting, the liver glycogen should be broken down, the glucose released into the blood, and glycogen synthesis should be inhibited. All right, so now we wake up, we eat breakfast, and there's some carbohydrates in that, so insulin is released, and insulin binds to the insulin receptor. And what will that do? Well, downstream of the insulin receptor is a protein phosphatase, a protein phosphatase called protein phosphatase 1, which we'll call PP1, so that gets activated through insulin signaling, and it does two important things here. It hydrolyzes the phosphate off of glycogen synthase, okay, which now activates glycogen synthase. And it hydrolyzes the phosphate off of glycogen phosphorylase, which inhibits the activity of the phosphorylase. Because when there's plenty of glucose and insulin around, it's time to build glycogen in the liver and stop releasing it into the bloodstream. This image summarizes where the blood glucose com comes from to maintain blood glucose levels during fasting. So what's shown here is a time scale of up to 40 days of fasting. But we start off with at time zero, we've just eaten a meal, so there's some exogenous dietary carbohydrate that's used to maintain blood glucose, but that only lasts for a few hours. And then hepatic glycogen is uh, broken down, that glucose is released into the blood, and for the next many hours, that's the main source of glucose for the blood. But you'll see that the, the liver glycogen doesn't last that long. And if we, for longer periods of fasting, for overnight fasting and longer, we need to actually synthesize glucose in the liver and the renal cortex by a process called gluconeogenesis that we'll discuss in the next video. Note that the glycogen breakdown happens first. It's a fast response, and we just talked about the fast signaling pathway involved in that process, versus gluconeogenesis, which is a much slower, more sustained response. Okay, let's summarize. Glycogen is how animals store glucose. It's highly branched structure that contains thousands of glucose monomers. Glycogen synthase and branching enzyme make it, and glycogen phosphorylase and debranching enzyme break it down. And most of the, the glucose that's released is phosphorylated. Glycogen in the liver is used to maintain blood glucose levels for short-term fasting and stress, and it's the glucose 6-phosphatase that's specifically expressed in hepatocytes that removes that phosphate and allows the glucose to be released from the liver. Glucagon signaling stimulates that breakdown of liver glycogenolysis. Glycogen in other cells is used within those cells for glycolysis and ATP production. And finally, insulin signaling stimulates glycogen synthesis in all cells.